Well, good morning again, everybody. Thank you for, for joining us today. Um, my name is Shelly Marone. I'm a 2005 Stevenson College alumna. I'm also a member of the UC Santa Cruz Alumni Council, which supports the educational calling of UC Santa Cruz and provides volunteer opportunities for our alumni. I am thrilled this morning to introduce our featured speaker today, Rebecca Hazelton. Rebecca is a 2008 Rachel Carson College graduate, and she's been helping people with their health and wellness since 2001. She is a licensed nutritionist, functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, and a heart math stress resilience coach. Rebecca specializes in weight loss, gut health, and lowering inflammation. She helps people across the globe regain their health so they can feel great and free to enjoy life again. Please join me in welcoming Rebecca. Thank you for being here today. Hi, everyone. It's awesome to have you here for the three keys to unstoppable health, your path to more energy, better digestion, and feeling great. And uh, maybe I typoed when I was sending over my graduation day. I actually graduated in 2000. So it has been a while since I've been up at that beautiful campus as a student, but um, I am local. And so I still get to go up and take gorgeous hikes. Um, such a great campus. So thanks so much to UCSD for having me here today. I'm thrilled to be sharing um, this information with so many people. And I really appreciate that uh, you've taken your time uh, out of your schedule to be here with me. Um, as Shelly was saying, I'm the founder of Functional Health and Unstoppable Health Coaching. I love to learn. So I've got all sorts of different credentials uh, behind my name. But essentially, what I do is um, I love learning. I love helping people and with their health. I'm incredibly passionate about the connection between diet and lifestyle and mindset. Uh, and how we can use those tools to uh, transform our lives. Um, in the nearly 20 years um, that I have been helping, helping people with uh, clearing up health symptoms, I find that what most people are needing, their, so, you know, my support with is managing symptoms, oftentimes gut and digestive issues, weight management, energy issues, and inflammation. So um, I want to start us out with talking and really defining what unstoppable health is because we might have different definitions. My definition of unstoppable health is having the physical, mental, and emotional vitality that makes you feel like your best self. And it means having complete freedom in your body so that you can do what you want when you want. Now let's all take a minute uh, and I'll just preface by saying um, the chat is open. You're welcome to post questions in the chat. I will be saving time at the end for questions, but if there's a burning question that you have to ask, then definitely let us know. Uh, but hopefully I will be answering uh, those questions automatically as we proceed with the talk. So this is a fun interactive part. Um, I want you to take a moment and we're gonna do an easy self quiz together. And it'll allow you to see where your system might not be working as well as you'd like it to. Now, these questions you could keep to yourself if you feel really open and want to share in the chat, you certainly can. Um, so I want to ask you first, you know, how many of you feel trapped or unfree in your body sometimes? And how many of you have inconsistent or lower energy than you'd like to have? How many of you have a weaker immune system than you would like? How many of you struggle with some sort of uh, digestive symptom, um, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux, nausea? Well, if you answered yes to any of those, then you're definitely in the right place to learn a lot more about why that's happening. So I'm here to share with you that all of those potential symptoms are related. Did you know that? And I'm here to share with you the key 
that unlocks your health and wellness so that you can have more freedom in your body and so that you can feel unstoppable. So over these nearly two decades, as I mentioned, I've discovered that there's one thing that is related to all of the health issues. Do you wanna know what it is? It's your gut. And by this, I mean that your, your gut, your digestion is tied to everything else in your body. What's going on with your gut is an indicator of bigger system issues. And here's the really fun part. Changing your gut can change everything else in your body. It's really powerful. So I'm gonna explain more about this as we go along. And I'm gonna be sharing with you how the health of your gut is the number one most important thing to creating unstoppable health, a robust immune system, and really having the freedom that you want in your life. So you're gonna be learning how generic diets, an unregulated nervous system, and an imbalance in your gut bugs is actually undermining your health and contributing to a variety of symptoms. And I'm excited to share three keys that you can apply toward your own healing process. So we're gonna talk about how you can support your unique dietary needs. For those of you that didn't even know you had them, <laughs> you do, you have unique dietary needs. We're gonna talk about how to support that. I'll be sharing how you can support the unique needs of your gut and also how you can support your nervous system so that you can transform your energy and your weight. You can optimize your immune system and ultimately correct symptoms that are showing up for you currently. And I also have a free gift. So definitely stick around to the end so I can share those details with you. So before we really get started, I have to uh, out myself, so to speak. I love to talk about poop. I know, so weird, right? But it doesn't have to be uncomfortable. Um, I want you to shake off any discomfort you might have around talking about this dirty topic um, and really embrace that poop is a great feedback system. Your poop tells you a lot about your gut and about the rest of your health. So I'm not going to ask you to share pictures or anything, and I won't be sharing any pictures with you around that. But um, it is a great, great, help, helpful thing. So you'll find out it's going to be coming up several times as we talk today. And I hope that you can just be at ease with poop conversation with me. So as I said earlier, your gut is this key that can help you unlock the trappings of your health. So you might be wondering, what is my gut? Like, oh my gosh, Rebecca's saying how important this is. What is my gut exactly? So your gut is where you bring in your food, which is fuel, right? Like your gas in your car. Food is your fuel. You take it in, in your gut, you convert it into energy that you need to thrive, to do everything else that you're going to do. And that's why we consider it the gas station of the body. And it includes your mouth, your stomach, your small intestines, your large intestines, and the millions of bacteria that live there and are in charge of all sorts of important functions. You're gonna, you're gonna leave today having a newfound respect for your body, guaranteed. Now, before we dive into the three keys that can help you unlock your unstoppable health, um, I wanna quickly share a story with you about part of my health journey. Um, and how I learned how and why the gut is at the root of all health, because you know there's a lot of people on here that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting. So you probably don't know um, how I got my start. Shortly after I uh, graduated from UCSC, um, out of nowhere, my 18 year old little brother got diagnosed with cancer. And um, he fought it really hard for two years, but Unfortunately, it was a very aggressive cancer, and he died when he was 20. And my whole world fell apart. Like, it's been a long time. I still get teary whenever I talk about it. We were really, really close, and I was devastated when he died. And if you've ever lost anyone close to you, I don't have to explain how it feels. You know 
uh, how devastating it can feel. While I was, you know, freshly graduated, trying to embark on my career in health and fitness, and uh, so I'm trying to keep my, you know, get my business going, keep my head above water, cope with this grief, and my health just took a downturn. The irony, right, of being in health and wellness and having your own health take a downturn. So it started out um, just, you know, feeling tired, more tired than usual, having difficulty focusing and concentrating, remembering things as well. Um, I started to have some gas and bloating and putting on a few pounds. And you know, even though I was taking the best care of myself that I knew how to at that time, uh, over a few months, my symptoms just started getting worse, more frequent. Um, I started to have headaches and low back pain on a daily basis. My brain fog got worse. Um, I could go on and on, but I won't. Thankfully, what I will share with you is that after I graduated from UCSD um, and went on to postgraduate work in um, nutrition and functional diagnostic nutrition school, um, I was able to run some functional labs on myself. Now, this may be a completely new term for you. So these are different tests than what you get at your doctor's office, and, you know, if you have a conventional doctor. And um, and so when you go to your doctor, they're testing you for disease. It's useful, but I didn't have a disease, so none of those tests showed anything. It wasn't, they weren't able to help me at all. Uh, but thankfully, the functional labs were immensely helpful, and I was able to see what precisely I needed to work on um, in order to help my body to heal and get on the other side of all those symptoms that I mentioned to you. So using the three keys that I will be sharing with you today, I was able to regain my health. More than that, I was able to actually get into even better health and um, develop a system that I could then share with other people so that I could help them to discover where their own best health was hiding. So now I'd like to talk with you about what's causing your symptoms, what's getting in the way of your unstoppable health journey. So I'm gonna say what they are and then we're gonna talk about how each one applies to you. Oh, thank you for the posts in the chat. I appreciate that. So first thing here that we're going to talk about um, is that your nutritional needs are as unique as your fingerprints, okay? Generic diets can lead to a lot of health problems. And just so that you know, when I'm speaking about diets, I'm not actually talking about like diets to, to lose weight, or as I say, release weight. That's, I'm just talking about what you eat right? That, that's the context of that, that term. So they can lead to a lot of problems uh, if you're eating generically. So the foods that you need to be pain-free and slim and energized and have good digestion, um, those are often different than what a friend needs or a family member needs or a coworker needs. And it's easy to just want to do something that you see someone else doing if you see them getting great results with it. You're kind of like, oh, let me hop on that bandwagon. I'm going to, I'm going to do what she's doing, or I'm going to do what he's doing. And um, I've seen so many people fall into this trap. I did too. And it can make you feel so much worse. And you can blame yourself and think that you're doing something wrong. But I'll tell you, the missing link is that your biochemistry, how your body works is unique unique on the inside and it's unique on the outside. So let me give you some examples. Some people, they need to eat uh, often, let's say, in order to feel their best, or they might need to uh, eat a lot of fat in their diet so that um, they can stay lean and have good energy and not be hungry every two hours. <laughs> um, and then other people, that would make them feel terrible. They could feel really weighted down and sluggish. Um, have brain fog. So the very thing, you, you probably heard that adage, uh, one person's medicine is another person's poison. It's so true. It's so true. So the first key I want to share with you today is to customize your diet. And I'll be sharing some examples. Um, you're welcome to take notes if you're that kind of person. If you learn better through um, jotting things down, please do that. Um, I also know that UCSC is going to be um, recording this and, uh, and sharing that. So, uh, but I, I love to write things down personally. So key number one is to customize and optimize your diet. 
your body has a set of nutritional requirements and it's specific to you. And none of us when we're born gets a list of that. We have to figure it out. So we all have something called biochemical individuality. As I mentioned, we're unique on the outside and on the inside. And all, while all of us needs all of the vitamins and all of the minerals, the amounts that each of us needs is unique. We metabolize or fuse up vitamins and minerals and proteins and fats and carbohydrates at different rates from one another. And this is a primary reason that a one size fits all approach to diet simply does not work. So a great place to start is to make sure that you've got some of the basics with your diet dialed in, right? I don't, we're probably all coming into this talk from different places on our health journeys, right? So some of you might be very practiced at this. All others might be complete newbies and this is brand new information. So a great place to start is eat clean food as often as possible. What do I mean by clean food? That means fresh, organic food that doesn't have uh, pesticides like glyphosate, for example, uh, that are known to be toxic and inflammatory to your body. Eat those as often as possible. You know that 100% organic for everyone all the time is not very feasible, but when it is, I really encourage you to opt for those choices. Makes a big difference. And um, there is a tool that I wanted to share with you. Some of you may have heard about the Environmental Working Group. And they offer, they're a nonprofit, and they offer a, a two lists every year. They update them. They've got the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. And actually, maybe. Um, post that into the chat here. So the EWG Environmental Working Group, and they got the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. And this is such a great resource for us because it tells us what the uh, least heavily sprayed produce items are every year. And there is some variation from year to year. So it's good to get that update. Um, they even have an app you can have on your phone. So when you're grocery shopping, and like maybe they don't have an organic option for something on your list, you can see like, does it really you know, matter more? Is this a very heavily sprayed item? In which case you might wanna opt for something else in its place. You can't get it organic. So eating plenty of these uh, clean veggies, leafy green vegetables and fruits every day uh, is, is a great uh, tool so that you can absorb more nutrients. The other thing I'll mention is having a little bit of fat or oil with those, especially with your veggies and your leafy greens is important so that you can absorb fat soluble vitamins. Okay, next tip that I have for you is you're gonna wanna make sure to balance your omega-6 and your omega-3s. So these are essential fatty acids. Your body doesn't make them, which means you have to get them through your diet. And both of these fatty acids are, uh, as I mentioned, they're considered essential. Um, now, unfortunately, processed foods um, and oils like uh, corn, canola, soy, uh, and also animals that are fed on those types of plants, corn and soy, they're dangerously high in omega-6 fatty acids and low in omega-3s. And you might think, but they're essential. Do I care if I'm getting a lot of omega-6? Yes. Yes, you care. <laughs> yes, you should care. Because lots of omega-6 is when we have an imbalanced ratio, it leads to the creation of weaker cells in your body, like all throughout your body and in your brain. And that can lead to an imbalance in your inflammatory system. Because those omega-6s, they actually promote inflammation, while omega-3s calm it down. And in order to have a balance, in your inflammatory system, you need to have a proper ratio of these fatty acids. So you want to, to help achieve that balance, you can avoid, again, eating animals. Um, oh, thanks for posting the link, Shelly, uh, to the Environmental Working Group. 
Um, in order to um, achieve that balance, avoid eating animals that are raised on corn and soy-based feed, uh, whether it's seafood or poultry or um, meat. And um, those are gonna be much higher in omega-6s. So you can look on labels for wild caught, pasture, 100% grass-fed. Um, if you don't eat meat or poultry or seafood, that still matters if you consume eggs. You wanna be getting those pastured eggs because those chickens, they're eating food. And if they're eating corn and soy primarily, then that, that yolk is going to be imbalanced uh, as well. Okay, so one thing I like to add is that you really can't get healthy if you're eating sick animals so, uh, or sick plants, right? You, you, um, you want, really wanna use your best judgment when you're grocery shopping so that you can reduce those really high volume omega-6 foods and help balance by bringing in more omega-3s. Now, uh, you can do that, you can help your body to do that by buying uh, oils like olive oil or flaxseed oil. And it's important if you do purchase those to get them in dark bottles because those oils, any oils, quite honestly, uh, but some are much more delicate than others are gonna be damaged by light. They're gonna be damaged by heat and they're gonna be damaged by oxygen. So get them in dark bottles so you're not getting the uh, light exposure for however long they've been on the shelf. And when you use those oils, you want to keep them in a cool place and you want to remove the lid, use the oil, and then put that lid right back on so that you're not letting a lot of oxygen inside. So other ways that you can support your body, um, you know, really boost your cellular protection, boost your immune system is using herbs and spices. Not only do they taste wonderful, but they offer a lot of health benefits. So some examples of really high um, ORAC scale, which is a rating for how much antioxidant protection various things provide. These are really high in antioxidant protection, turmeric, cloves, garlic, sage, and rosemary. Um, and then also berries, especially blueberries. Those are very, very high in um, anti-inflammatory properties. And another tip I have for you is don't, don't guess, test. So to really skillfully and confidently customize your diet, I recommend testing. Specifically, the metabolic typing advanced test is something that uh, I do with every single client that I work with. And it was such a game changer for myself. And you know, many, many, many years ago, such a game changer. And I've just seen it change a lot of people's lives since that time. Um, it's really um, helpful so that you can better understand your unique biochemistry. And you know, remember we talked about how um, different bodies are gonna use up certain nutrients at faster rates and others at slower rates. Um, this is how you find out which ones. And the results are gonna let you know which parts of your nervous system are gonna need extra support and which of those foods are going to provide that support for you. So you can imagine how helpful that would be. Um, I consider the testing to be like hitting reboot on your system and really getting back to square one of what your body ultimately needs. And to be able to much better understand your body language, the messages your body is sending to you so that you can navigate your food choices with a lot more confidence and ease. So some other things that you can start doing right away uh, is to start experimenting with different types and amounts of each macronutrient. So there's three types of macronutrients, protein, fats, and carbohydrates. And there's some examples on the slide here of you know, what foods are high in each of those uh, categories. So for proteins, eggs, meat, seafood, cheese, tempeh, uh, which is fermented soy, for fats, olive oil, butter, ghee, which is clarified butter, coconut oil, avocados, nuts, seeds, and carbohydrates, all your vegetables, fruits, grains, and beans. So you can start to experiment um, with 
the types of foods you're getting and the amounts of those foods that you're getting at each meal. So you can develop your best meal combos. Um, and you're gonna notice that about an hour or so after you eat, you can tell that it worked because your body tells you, you feel better, you're focused, you have great energy. And over time, you uh, notice that your symptoms re resolve, such as like your weight, your weight balances. I'm gonna just check in the chat here. Um... Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm glad the speed at which I'm talking is the right speed. <laughs> Good. I know some people are painfully slow or way too fast. I get so excited. Sometimes I go too fast. So thanks for letting me know. Um, appreciate that. So another thing that you can do is um, I recommend some sort of food journaling system uh, in the short term. It doesn't have to be something that you do as a lifelong habit, but writing down what you eat, especially if you're going to be experimenting, like I recommended on the previous slide, it really allows you to take greater notice of, hey, how am I doing one to two hours afterward? Or if you feel like garbage, you can look, what did I eat? Because I feel like garbage. I'm not gonna repeat that, right? So food journaling, even in the short term, it can really help you dial in your best food combination. So I wanna share with you that um, a, a client that I worked with several years ago, um, Cindy, she came to me with all sorts of symptoms. She was overweight, she was gassy, she was bloated. Um, she was dealing with poop issues. I told you we were gonna talk about poop. Um, yeah, she was, she was having, for years she was having um, bowel irregularities and um, she had sweet craving. I mean, I could go on and on. She had a lot of symptoms and um, she didn't think that they were ever gonna resolve. She had tried a lot of things and I said, okay, we're going to just go back. We're going to start with the basics. And what we did is we customized her diet. And really shortly after customizing uh, her diet, her gut symptoms that she had had for years completely resolved. She couldn't believe it. She's like, is this a joke? I can't wait. What? What's happening right now? They completely went away. Um, she also lost 17 pounds. Like, I, I think it was like six weeks or something which tells me there was a lot of inflammation because she worked out consistently, right? Which is important. You don't want to lose muscle. No, thank you. You want to release inflammation and body fat if you have excess body fat to lose, of course. And so it was just amazing. And we didn't go on some radical elimination diet. We did the metabolic typing. We focused some things in and she feels great. And I, I know that she still feels great because we keep in touch. Uh, there's a question. So uh, let's see, what do you think about organic soy? Um, yeah, organic soy, I, I, I recommend tempeh if you're gonna consume it because it is fermented and it's more digestible and definitely get organic. Gerardo uh, says, is there concern with eating the same foods without much variations if you seem to feel good? It depends, you know, if you're feeling good, then no, not really. I do recommend changing with the seasons, you know, mix things up. It's good to try a new recipe now and again, uh, but generally your body is gonna tell you if you're doing the right things, if you're eating the same thing over and over and you just feel terrible, um, and no matter what you eat, you still feel terrible, that's an entirely different situation. Some practitioners have a lot more rigid standards about rotating your diet. I find that we sometimes get stuck in a rut and it is good, like I said, vary it with the season. That's kind of my go-to. Like if you're buying things that are local, get them, you know, you can see what's in season, right? And that's a really easy way to kind of change things up on your radar. And so, yeah, good question. So the second big disruptor of your health is an unregulated nervous system. Now your stress response, which involves uh, your nervous system and your stress hormones, it has your gut on speed dial. Now your nervous system includes your brain and your spine and your nerves. And it's the center for communication that runs everything else, all the other systems in your body. So, you know, it's just a little bit important. And a lot of things work automatically in your body because of your nervous system. 
and um, its autonomic branch. When I was in college, I remember this one because it sounded like automatic, autonomic, automatic, things that happen automatically, your heartbeat, your breathing, your digestion, um, and even parts of your immune system, they all work automatically thanks to this system. And there is a four-way connection between your brain, your heart, your lungs, and your gut. And when you perceive things in your environment as stressful, your brain releases a hormone called CRH. That's actually an abbreviation for corticotropin releasing hormone, which is why we abbreviate it. And it connects to um, your amygdala, which is considered your stress center. So this, this hormone, this CRH that gets released when, we're, when we perceive stress, I'll talk a little bit more about perception in a moment. It can affect all sorts of things related to your gut and your overall wellness. So your motility, how fast food's going through you, your digestion and your absorption, how well are you breaking down your food? How well are you able to absorb the nutrients from your food? Okay, and also it uh, influences your microbiota, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about. So yes, it is a, an important system. Um, I wanna focus in on perception. Perception um, is a really key point here. If we perceive things as stressful, not everyone per perceives a situation in the same way, right? Some people, they get cut off in traffic. They're like, oh, whatever. Other people, they get road rage, all right? So the meaning we attach to the things that we encounter have everything to do with what our body is going to do, what your biochemistry is going to do, what your nervous system and your stress response is going to do. So that's why I differentiate perception rather than just saying stress. Uh, stress is in the eye of the beholder. So if you perceive things as stressful often, your nervous system is going to get activated often. Your stress response is actually going to get in the habit of being overzealous or overeager. And because of the amygdala, right, that part of your brain, your stress response, your heart and your gut all being connected by the vagus nerve, um, this is why emotions and emotional stress have such a bigger, you know, impact on gut health than we ever realized. And it's also why if you try to address sometimes your gut symptoms by just looking at food or just looking at supplements, it's not going to be an effective strategy long term. We have to look at the emotional stress. It has to be part of the solution. So we're going to talk more about that. All right, so a couple other things. So I mentioned that CRH influences your gut motility. Some of you may have heard of or even be dealing with things like irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, or IBD, irritable bowel disease. Um, these are very common, uh, very common gut issues. And what happens with this stress hormone, CRH, is it can slow down the transit time of your food in your small intestine, okay? Before the food gets downstream, you can slow it down. So what happens at that point is your bacteria, they're gonna really cause a lot of fermentation, a lot of gas and potential bloating if your food's just hanging out there for a long period of time. But then that hormone can also speed up things as it gets to your large intestine. So that can lead to its own set of issues. Okay, what else? CRH disrupts or inhibits your digestive juices. In particular, you all have a gut digestive juice called HCL or hydrochloric acid. It's essential for you to digest food, especially protein. And it's also considered your first line of defense. If you were to eat or drink something that had uh, some sort of pathogen or bacteria, which everything you eat, we, we're always in contact with different species of bacteria. So it's not a, if this will happen, it's when it happens, it's gonna happen, absolutely. When you encounter um, things that don't agree with your system, that aren't a friendly flora, 
your hydrochloric acid is gonna be able to protect you if you have enough of it. If you don't have enough of it because of this high stress hormone, well, that's when things can get really out of balance. Okay, so the other thing that these stress hormones can do is uh, aid in overgrowth as, as a, in this very way that I was just describing, you can get an imbalance of your uh, bad gut bugs to good gut bugs because you just don't have enough proper digestive juice balance to keep you safe. Um, so it can reduce the diversity of good, healthy, friendly flora in your body and um, increase susceptibility to infections. And also um, it's linked to something called leaky gut. And I will talk more about that. So in general, your gut bugs are really an important essential part of your immune system. They also make key vitamins. They help you digest your food. They help you keep your hormones balanced. They help with so many things. So we want to support them if that wasn't already clear. We can support them with good food. We can also support them through what I'm gonna talk about next, which is regulating your nervous system. Who feels like this guy sometimes? So let's take a look at, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Supporting your emotional stress and nervous system. And I think this is going to uh, answer um, some of the questions coming in through the chat. And you're all like, how do I help the system? So every single one of you, of us, needs to have effective tools in place to what's called emotionally self-regulate throughout your day. It's the daily task. So to regulate yourself, to regulate your emotions is a fundamental tool for long-term wellness. Otherwise, once you get triggered by something that's stressful, you can you get this uh, engagement of your hormonal and nervous systems, they can get unbalanced and stay unbalanced for hours, not just a few minutes, for hours. Think about it. If you're getting triggered several times a day, you're basically spending your day with this upregulated nervous system. Not a good combination. This is going to cause energy drains. It's going to cause hormonal imbalance because your stress hormones affect all of your other hormones. It's going to weaken your gut. It's going to weaken how you're taking in your nutrients. So emotional stress is a huge cause of a lot of symptoms that you don't want to have. And the chances are that you're not actually using an effective self-regulation system currently. And it's going to make a really powerful difference for you to do that. So one of the tools I teach my clients is called heart math. And I actually first learned about heart math at UCSC in a health psychology class. Someone from HeartMath Institute actually came and spoke, and obviously it was a game changer for me. Now, this uh, nonprofit organization researches and uh, designs or creates tools that help you to emotionally self-regulate. There's tools that you can do on the go, right there in those moments of stress where you can shift your breathing, and your attention. So those are two big parts of self-regulation. Shift your attention. A lot of heart math tools talk about, hey, focus your attention on your heart. Just get out, get out of the problem for a second. Focus your attention on the heart. And then you shift your breathing. You make your breath slower and deeper, for example. And something really magical happens just with those two simple things, although there's a lot more to heart math than that, just doing that will start to change your heartbeat. And your heartbeat, every beat of your heart sends information up to your brain, to your amygdala. Remember we talked about that? The amygdala, your stress center? It, it is like this, <laughs> listening for your heartbeat. What is your heartbeat telling it to do? Every beat of your heart. Imagine that. I mean, it's, it's amazing. When I learned that, I was just astounded that your heart sends more information to your brain than your brain does to your heart. Your heartbeat's powerful. And so when you start to shift your heartbeat through these tools, then your heartbeat sends different instructions to your brain, 
which can then shift you out of an unhealthy stress response. When you regulate your nervous system, you're also going to support your oxytocin production. And oxytocin is a really key uh, hormone in gut health and in feeling good and also lowering your stress hormones. So regulating your nervous system is so powerful. I'm gonna, Shelly, I'm gonna come back to that probiotic question. Good, good question. We're gonna get to it in the next section. So first I wanna share with you, uh, oh my gosh. So my client, Mary, she's a great example of the results somebody can have when you regulate your nervous system. When we first started out, she had all sorts of stress going on. She was a working mom and she was overweight. She had trouble sleeping. She had sugar cravings. She was exhausted. And she thought, you know, I'm never going to be able to heal my body. I'm always going to feel this way, or I'm going to just have to live in a bubble and, you know, not hang out with any friends and not eat out ever. You know, these are the thoughts going through her head. But ultimately what it came down to was that wasn't true. She released 40 pounds. She released the excess body fat off her body. She got a lot of energy back. So she wasn't exhausted. She actually had good balanced energy. She had more patience with her kids. Um, what else? Um, oh, her cravings went away. And she got into like a good activity routine because she had better energy. And ultimately what it came down to was applying the tools of emotional self-regulation consistently. They're not hard, but it's a habit, right? And it was a game changer for her when she added that component in. So before we dig into um, the nitty gritty of how your gut acts as a gatekeeper to your digestive system, your immune system, um, I have a gift that I want to share with all of you, or I guess I can't share with every single one of you, but for the people who want it the most, I want to share it. So it's a complimentary phone consultation called an unstoppable health discovery session. And um, it's not a sales call. It's an opportunity for you to um, regain your health if you're needing some support. So in this free session, we look at what's missing for you so that you can have the health and freedom that you want to have. So this applies to people who are having symptoms, okay? If you feel like a million bucks and you're just here to support UCSC and listen to what I have to say, great, thanks for being here. Um, but don't sign up for this free call, okay? This is for people who really need help. You're feeling stuck, you're having some symptoms, um, all of your best approaches hasn't resolved those symptoms, hop on the phone. I'm gonna offer um, 10 of these slots. Obviously I, I can't offer you know, 100 of them. I don't have time for that. But I really wanna connect with any of you who are really struggling to get a leg up on your health. Um, and it's a real priority for you to do so. And you just feel like there's something missing. So my calendar link is um, on the slide here, bit.ly slash scheduling health, and that'll take you to my online calendar. So the first 10 people who apply for that, who have symptoms and really need help and are motivated, I look forward to supporting you. Now let's move into the third cause of health blocks, which is uninvited guests in your gut or also there might be some leaky gut going on. So let's take a deeper look at your gut. So we want, I want you to know how it works um, so that you know uh, what you can do uh, additionally to what you might be doing to really support yourself. So this is a slide of what your gut looks like. Okay, these are your, your gut cell lining, uh, the, gut, the actual gut cells. These uh, are a single layer thick which is amazing to me. Your skin has seven layers of thickness to it. Your gut, one, single cell. And this cell wall forms a barrier between your digestive system and your bloodstream. You can almost think of it like a tube, okay? Your gut is like a tube with, it's open on both ends. And things, when you eat or drink things, it kind of passes through this tube. It doesn't actually get into your body, your bloodstream without permission, okay? So we also call your gut, your mucosal barrier or your second skin. This is where your digestion and absorption uh, takes place. So the job of this lining, it's to let 
the right things pass through into your bloodstream, your nutrients, for example. Let that pass into your bloodstream, keep out all the rest, keep out infections, keep out pesticides, keep out toxins. It's kind of like a, a screen, a screen on your window or a screen on your door. It's gonna let in fresh air and light, but it's gonna keep out bugs and birds and neighborhood cats, right? So this is when it's working well. But guess what? All sorts of things can throw off this functional system. Poor food choices, the wrong diet for you, for your body, uh, eating quickly, like always eating in a rush or eating on the go, um, overeating, perceiving stressors as threats rather than challenges, um, inadequate sleep, right? Um, Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. This is all gonna create a great environment for your gut cells to be able to digest and absorb your food properly. Um, but it's, it's also a great environment for uninvited gut guests, like bacterial imbalance, infections, and leaky gut. Um, someone posted that they were not, they had a problem with my scheduling with me. So let me just post the link. Maybe there was a typo. Got my scheduling health. Try that. Thank you for letting me know. And let me know again if it doesn't work. Okay, so let's move on to leaky gut. Leaky gut is when your gut cell lining is no longer selectively letting things pass through it into your bloodstream. But instead there's a, a gap or a hole as you can maybe see on the slide there. And anything that wants to pass through can. Things like pesticides, toxins, um, pathogens like uh, bacteria, viruses, or parasites. So leaky gut is at the root of a whole lot of symptoms. Things like low energy, uh, brain fog, body pain, excess weight, trouble sleeping, lowered immune system, increased uh, allergies or uh, food sensitivities, headaches, um, irregular bowel movements, gas, bloating, um, skin problems, long list, right? I could keep going, but you get the picture. Um, it's, it's very important to uh, have good gut permeability, the, the right integrity of your gut cells. And, and let me tell you one other thing about this. Um, when, let's see, how do I say? So when you have leaky gut, when you have this increased permeability, your body isn't able to contain your gut bugs as poop. We call those back, the nice way of saying is like bacterial metabolites, okay? But it's essentially, it's the poop that your gut bugs produce. And when you have permeability, Though that poop spills into your bloodstream. Uh, they call this poop LPS, lipopolysaccharide, okay? It, um, it, it triggers this systemic inflammation, okay? So it would be like, if you go to the bathroom in the bathroom, in the toilet, it's not a problem. But if you go and take a, if you go to the bathroom in the kitchen or the living room, there would be a big problem with that. So it's just like your gut bugs, they're supposed to poop, but it's supposed to be contained in the right area of your body. So when you have leaky gut, it's just going all over your house. It's going all over your body. It's very inflammatory. So whether you have uninvited gut guests, this is my point, whether you have uninvited gut guests or not, having a healthy gut is essential. It's essential for you to be healthy, to feel your best, and to avoid diseases down the road. Can someone post and let me know that if that link works now? I just wanna make sure that it, that it is. So if, oh good, thank you. <laughs> if you wanna feel great in your body and address the root of why you're having symptoms, then the third key that I wanna share with you is to seal and heal your gut. A great way to help is to incorporate some healing foods into your diet. Now, I have to preface this with, I don't know your health history. 
Okay, unless I've worked with you, then I do. But if I haven't worked with you, I don't know your health history. I don't know what's going on with you. So legally, I, I have to add here, before you make any changes to your diet or lifestyle, please check with your practitioner first. That's important because food is powerful medicine. Okay, so done. Um, so yes, there's some things I'm gonna talk about now that can be very supportive. Please, you know, use the information wisely and safely. All right, so things like bone broth, gelatin and collagen, they are so, so important for helping reduce inflammation and sealing and healing your gut. Now they do have to come from healthy animals, right? You can't get healthy from a sick animal or anything from that animal. So healthy grass fed animals, that's where you wanna source your, or if it's, you know, you can make a bone broth from seafood, right? Um, so healthy wild caught fish, those are gonna contain the constituents that you really want, which are these amino acids, proline and glycine. They are concentrated in any of these three options from liquids that you can drink to powders you can put into um, shakes or smoothies. It, they can be flavorless. Um, so it's really great, there's so many options. Uh, I've been talking about bone broth and collagen and gelatin for over a decade, like a really long time. And in the past, I don't know, five or so years, like you must have seen at the stores, this just explosion of bone broth products and broths and uh, collagen. I mean, every it's everywhere now. And I mean, that's great, but it's like, yeah, we've known that for a long time. <laughs> Thanks for hopping on the bandwagon. Um, they're loaded with some amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein that help you, you know, to heal those damaged gut cells, which can help with your output of digestive juices. So help restore your hydrochloric acid, help with your enzyme output, um, help detoxify things that, uh, you know, from your um, gut cells that could be damaging them. So yes, those are great options. What else? In fermented foods. Now in general, fermented foods, they're going to feed your good gut flora. They're going to strengthen your digestion. They can help strengthen your immune system because they're living foods. They contain a lot of beneficial um, bacteria and sometimes yeast, depending on the food item or the beverage. And um, it can help your immune system do its job even better. So things like sauerkraut, um, kimchi, uh, kvass, which is a, a liquid, um, kombucha, lacto-fermented veggies, one of my favorites, fermented pickles, love pickles, uh, things like 24-hour um, uh, yogurt. Oh my gosh. Wow. Thanks for the timing uh, message. I'm almost done. I'm going to speed it along. I just want to quickly add, some of you may have um, certain yeast imbalances or fungal imbalances or histamine issues or something called SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. If that's you, you really wanna check with your practitioner first before diving into this um, fermented food suggestion because it could be contraindicated. I was having so much fun with you guys. I didn't even hear my timer. So, uh, okay, bonus tool is um, that, you know, if you, all of these suggestions are great, but I gotta tell you that a great test to um, further explore your gut health can help in so many ways. You can see if you do have pathogens, if you have an imbalance in your friendly flora versus you know, your bad gut bugs, your unfriendly flora. You can see if you have yeast overgrowth or parasites or to see if you have leaky gut. This, as you can imagine, would really help accelerate and, and focus you on the right protocols to heal your body. Whoops. Uh, so this unfortunately is not offered by most medical doctors, most MDs. So you would want to seek out an alternative health practitioner um, if you are interested in that level of testing. Um, I do these tests frequently. Okay, um, I'm gonna skip this awesome success story just because we are so short on time, but suffice to say, the testing is invaluable and sometimes you can be doing everything that you know how to do to get rid of inflammation and, and heal your body. But those tests, boy, they can really help you to pinpoint some previously unidentified problems and then deal with them. 
So to recap with you, your gut, if you haven't gotten a message, your gut is your key to unstoppable health and the three tools in order you know, to do that, to really help you is to customize and optimize your food, regulate your nervous system, seal and heal your gut. And I shared a lot of tips on how you can start to, to do that. Um, I'm gonna skip that. And just remind you, um, I don't know if there's any spots left, but um, yes, if you need support, I would love to support you. Book in for that complimentary session. I work with people all over the world, um, literally like different countries. Um, I can work totally virtually with people. So please let me know if you need some support. And um, my bonus gift is if you don't already get my free weekly newsletter, um, you can, I wonder, I, I think that, yeah, you can post your email in the chat. You can send it privately, or I think I'm going to get a list of all of the attendees. And I'd love to share this free gift and my free newsletter with y'all. Um, so I will plan to do that. And you would get that from me in the next couple of days. And it's a, just a bonus guide to support what I've talked about with you here today and really drive home those points. So I know we don't have a lot of time for questions, but, um, if you would like to, now would be a good time. Oh, thank you for the friendly comments and the interests for the newsletter. Awesome. Any questions? Wow, just pretty much everyone just going, send me that free <laughs> guide. Uh, okay, here's a question. What is 24 hour yogurt? 24 hour yogurt is a longer fermented yogurt, which has a lot more live, um, act, you know, not even active cultures, a lot more living probiotics in them, which can help um, pass through your system and crowd out unfriendly bugs. So um, it's one of the tools that you can use to basically be eating your probiotics daily. I have a ton of information on supplemental probiotics, but there's, there's a, that's probably a talk for another day to really get into all of those different types. Suffice to say, you can start with edibles. Okay, one other question. Do you recommend taking probiotics or collagen? Uh, yes, I did recommend taking collagen and they're totally different. Both can be helpful in um, a healing journey and it just kind of depends on what's going on with you. Food is a great way to start to test the probiotic theory because it's not as concentrated as a supplement. So that can be helpful to kind of test the waters. And if you start to feel a little bit better, then you can eat more probiotic foods or you can consider even taking some supplements. Again, depends on what's going on with your gut. And yes, I recommended collagen because it can help seal and heal your gut and repair that damage. Shelia, is there a particular fad diet that's really popular right now that you're concerned about that you maybe want to talk through why it might not be the best choice for some people? I think all fad diets are going to be harmful to some people and some fad diets are going to be great for some people. So going back to that generic diets, two thumbs down, figuring out what works for your body is great. And your body language will tell you if you're following a fad diet and you feel amazing, that's great. You might feel amazing for a while. You might feel amazing for a long time, or you might be, start to feel really poorly from eating that way in the long term. If something is really restricted and is, you know, not including um, multiple food groups, then I would be, I don't to say suspicious, but in the long term, that wouldn't be something I would want to advocate. There's so many great ways of, um, uh, you know, customizing a diet, even things that feel extreme to one person. Like for example, keto diets feel really restrictive to some people. For others, it's really not. That's just absolutely in alignment with how they generally eat and feel their best. So as long as you're, you know, getting good quality foods, like if there was a fad diet that was all packaged stuff, I would be like, mm, do not do that. <laughs> That's not sustainable. Um, you're welcome. Lots of nice comments is if one is on medication for digestive issues, does this mask the actual problem? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, yes, most likely there's a lot of different medications, but typically here's the thing. Medications, that's their job is to mask a symptom. That's their job. 
most all medications don't fix the underlying root that their job is to mask the symptom itself so um, the slide that i slipped that i that i, that I skipped over um, it talks about how you know the symptom is just on the surface the root of the problem is what you really want to get to because if you just treat that one symptom but you never got to the root cause that symptom might go away for a little bit or you're masking it but then another symptom is going to come creeping up because the fundamentals of your health weren't supported um, so sometimes though you do need to be on a medication i'm not saying don't take your medication but baby you want to also search for the root cause and support that and then maybe you can get off your medication later or maybe not we, you would want to you know proceed in a wise way and work with your practitioner on that uh and should i buy viomes customized bacteria i'm familiar with the viome test can you clarify what you mean by that is there a probiotic that they're selling or are you asking about like the test itself if you should do that oh oh sorry i know we're running out of time here oh my gosh y'all i'm sorry i i really want to answer all your questions but i have to turn the the microphone over to wrap up for today. Um, what I will try to do is um, message you individually. You know what? If you if, here's what you can do: send me an email with your question. If I didn't get to it, or you would like more clarification, I'll post my uh, email address, and um, that way I can answer the questions I didn't get to today. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Thanks so much, Rebecca. That was wonderful presentation. And um, I, I especially was loving the uh, information about getting ourselves tested so we could have better information about our individual needs that that definitely resonated. Um, I want to thank our audience for, for joining us today. What a great group and a great conversation. And, and thank you for asking so many great questions. I hope you all enjoyed this Alumni Week event. I want to remind you that we have 70 events happening as part of Alumni Week. So there's something for everyone and it's not too late to register for those um, for those other events. So, so check those out. Um, if anyone here uh, is interested in possibly volunteering with UC Santa Cruz in any way, you can email um, alumni at ucse.edu to get involved. We could use your help and I'm going to put that email address in the chat. Oh, Barbara beat me to it. That's great. Um, we would also be so, so grateful if you all were able to make a donation of any size this week to support UC Santa Cruz, its students, and its programs. Uh, personally, I'm very passionate about the Alumni Association's uh, scholarship fund. We provide UCSC students with financial need and high academic standing, a $3,000 annual scholarship. Uh, we gave out 49 scholarships this year and we hope to grow that fund so that we can support even more students in the future so any gift is appreciated it all makes a difference and thank you to those of you who have already uh, donated information about all of this is in the chat um, again you can email uh, alumni at ucse.edu to learn more um, and i just want to thank you again for joining us have a wonderful rest of your day and happy alumni week